Can the Dallas Cowboys get another win in the AFC South or are the Jaguars ready to upset the Cowboys? All that and more in this crossover edition of the Locked On Cowboys and Locked On Jaguars podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys and Locked On Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Crossover Thursday is presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun, it's so easy to use. No competing against other players, it's just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. It can take literally less than 60 seconds to fill out an entry yeah. and enter. It's that easy. We love prize picks, and we know that you will too. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. I am the host of Locked On Cowboys. I am joined by a guest that I am just so excited to talk to. I've been waiting for years to talk to him on the crossover right podcast. It's Tony Wiggins from Locked On Jaguars. Tony, what's up, man? Doing, I am doing good. And uh, we, uh, there's a running joke between me and you. People don't understand. I, for years, I said Marcus Mosher doesn't follow me. And Marcus Mosher was following me the whole time. And I asked him on a group. We were all together at, at a at a group function here online, and I said, uh-huh. "Can somebody please tell Marcus Mosher to follow me?" And Marcus goes, "What are you talking about? I follow you." And everybody <laughs> thought it years. was so. Everybody thought it was so funny, right? That this this OG of this stuff is begging for followers. You know what I'm saying? But no, it's really really uh good to finally talk to you, man. And uh, we're kind of down. the OGs of uh, locked out, right? How long have you been here? Uh. I'm I'm uh I'm not quite an OG. There's some people that have been there longer than me, like Cody and yep. and Peter Bukowski and and I think Patricia, uh, uh your boy Q. Uh, I think I'm right around. I'm right underneath okay. them. I think it's I'm, I'm I'm past my fourth year now. So there you go. Uh, yeah, man. I have a lot of lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this one too because I got a feeling. Uh, first I have to ask you: Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? No, right? I wish I have yeah. other obligations I've got to do on yeah. Sunday, but I I wish because this would be a fun game. Well, there's gonna be a lot of cowboy fans there. Oh yeah, because the, you know that's always. that's the way it always is, and uh, I I know that from I grew up in Washington as a fan of Washington, and there were more cowboy fans outside of the state of Texas mm-hmm. in Washington D.C. than anywhere, and I just know I know how they roll, you know. So it's gonna be fun, man. You guys got a tough tough game on your hands because the Jaguars, as I told you, they are not they are not a punk regardless of what you think their record is. Yeah, let's talk about Jacksonville a little bit and some of the biggest storylines because I've got to believe, Tony, it's it's Trevor Lawrence, right? That is. It, it is. Uh, since week nine, he's probably been the hottest quarterback in the NFL. No picks, like nine touchdowns, uh, seventy some odd percent completion. I know I don't have the exact numbers, but I think exact numbers ruin the party sometimes when you talk about how a guy's playing because he has just been playing lights out. I he, to me, he's looked like Peyton Manning. Uh, with a getaway car. He looked like Peyton Manning with legs the last five weeks. And he's just been in such command uh, of this offense. He even did something the other day uh, that wasn't a read. And Doug told the media, ask him about it. He he told, I was there Monday when he said it. Was that, you know, what about that play when Trevor ran a touchdown? He said, uh, yeah, ask him about it because we were bewildered too. It was not a read. Trevor pulled it, pulled it back, didn't give it to the running back and scored a touchdown. And they kind of laughed about it on the sidelines. So, the thing is, is that he is to the point where he is super, super comfortable, mm-hmm. and um, he's finally had a chance to just be the quarterback of the team, as opposed to a year ago where he was constantly being a press secretary of right. all things Jaguars. Uh, I actually got his numbers right here. Since week nine, 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions, 7.5 yards per attempt, second highest graded quarterback by Pro Football Fo- Focus, second highest adjusted completion percentage, second highest time average time to throw. Uh, Second highest big time throw rate. Like he's arrived, Tony. And it's awesome because that we were a little bit concerned maybe after year one. uh, And there's parts of the season where, you know, it looked a little shaky. But to see him finally start to look like, you know, the greatest quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, 
This is awesome. It, it's just, it's great for the league to have more quarterbacks like this. It is, and I think what it does is it teaches patience. Yes. Because I, yes. I I I can even look back and see a podcast where I said Trevor is an elite, and uh, mine was about being in the moment. Mine is about demonstrated performance, and you know we talk about elite traits and characteristics. But you aren't elite until you actually start doing it. My grandmother yes. used to say it doesn't matter what you want to do in life. You are where your behind is. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting on the couch, you're a bum. You know, no matter. And you can have all these dreams and aspirations all you want to. So until he started actually playing and giving that demonstrated performance week after week, he wasn't elite. But now he is. That's just the way it is. Tom Brady was, you could say Tom Brady was always great while he was backing up Drew Bledsoe, but he wasn't great until he was great, right? So. Right. That's the thing with Trevor. And more more than anything you see statistically, what you see is you see a different attitude about him. Mm -hmm. And with that attitude has also come not being Mr. Nice Guy all the time. He got up in some Titans defensive lineman's face the other day. Love it. And and then he he went like this. He pointed to the scoreboard. That's that alpha that that you want to see, and it has to be woken up, uh, sometimes by circumstances where a guy can't pick and choose when he wants it to happen. But when it does, he needs to embrace it, and I think that's what he's done. Yeah, and on the Cowboys side of things, it's the offensive line. They lost Terrence Steele on Sunday. He was playing the best of his career. Uh, they will be getting Tyron Smith back this game. This will be a, his first game back of the season. It's going to be curious to see how they figure out things on the left side of the line, but I think Cowboy fans are really nervous about the right tackle spot, whether it's Josh Ball, who looked pretty bad in the preseason, or whether it's a 41-year-old Jason Peters playing on that right side. This offense was humming. You know, since Dak Prescott came back to the lineup, they're the number one offense in the league. And they're just worried that with one offensive line injury, things could come tumbling down. So that's something that I'm going to keep an eye on this game uh, because Jacksonville, they've got some dudes on their defensive line, uh, specifically Josh Allen, who I think every year is one of the most underrated edge rushers in the league. Uh, they got a, a certain number one pick uh, across from him that we could talk about a little bit. But, Tony, I'm worried about their offensive line in this game. I really am. And, you know, the Jaguars have had moments where you should be concerned, and then they've had moments where you really shouldn't be concerned because Josh Allen, uh, by name, has been uh, really good. Early in the year, he was one of the top guys in pressures, and then he kind of disappeared for five or six games, and he needed to play better. He did it the other day. He played better. Mm-hmm. So when you get him at his best, he, he's a, he's a, he's something to deal with. He's he's a handful. Trayvon Walker played his best game as a pro, in my opinion, uh, against Tennessee. That sack that he had, yeah, oh. he's unreal. But that shows you what he can do. And the best plays that he's had has been when he's had his hand on the ground in an even front, the way Dallas plays. Yep, when he's had his hand on the ground. When he's disappeared is when he stood up as an outside linebacker. And, uh, you know, I heard a, a, a Leon Searcy the other day, a pro, a former a all pro say he's probably better off that way. And I said it before. I said, because he's closer to the action, you take advantage of his power and his quickness and all right. of those traits that yep. we talk, as opposed to giving, when you give him a run and start, you're also giving these tackles a run and start. And he's already high. So maybe they caught on to something. Uh, we're still waiting on results from MRI, by the way. He hurt his ankle at the end of the game, mm. and uh, we haven't had a report on that. There's nothing to indicate, though, that he won't play, but we just I think they're doing it from a precautionary standpoint. Sure. But you're right. That's going to be a big deal because, uh, you know, I'm afraid, and I'll tell you this in segment two, I'm afraid of Dallas. I'm afraid of, uh, of Tony Pollard. I, I am absolutely afraid of him. I'm afraid of the fact that uh, Dak can get the ball out quickly to his – to his tight ends and his running backs, all of those things. So it's going to be pivotal that those guys do first stop the run and then put Dak in some down and distance situations where he actually has to throw the ball. All right, let's talk about some key matchups uh, that we're looking forward to in this game. But before we do that, I want to let you know that this show is sponsored by Simply Safe at the Locked On Podcast Network. We believe home should be where you and your family feel the absolute safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering locked on listeners 40% off a new security system. But don't put this off. Here is why that we love it. They have whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. 
They have HD security cameras for inside and outside your house. They have smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real. And they even have hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home with 24-7 professional monitoring service that costs under a dollar a day. It's less than half the price of traditional home security systems. With a top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in control of your system, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings anytime, anywhere. Don't miss your chance to save big on our favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL today. That is simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. All right, Tony, let's talk about some big matchups. What are you looking forward to seeing? I think the Jaguars, if you've watched any of their tape, one of the things that they have been able to consistently do is get the ball out of Trevor Lawrence's hand very yeah. quickly. They use a lot of quick outs, a lot of slants, a lot of throwing the ball, dumping it off to the tight ends and the backs, a lot of quick screen actions, a weird little screen where it looks like they throw the ball to the running back when he's between the guard and the tackle. It's like he's underhandedly throwing it to him. They've started to use the tight end a little bit more uh, close to the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be imperative because ain't nobody stopping Michael Pollard. You know, I mean, uh, Michael Parsons. Mike Parsons. Yep. If, he, if he wants to get loose, he's, he's the top five player in the NFL, in my opinion. DeMarcus Lawrence is still the real deal. Yes. Uh, you know, they got, it was it Sam Williams and then the kid from Kansas State was it Torrance of a few Dorrance years Armstrong. Yep. Dorrance, Dorrance Armstrong. They, it's like, Randy Gregory leaves, and then they get more guys that look just like that, you know. And I'm and I'm sitting there like, they really, really know how to get after the passer. They can do it from different angles, with Michael Parsons being off the ball or in a nine wide situation, and that's hard, man. Because the Jaguars, even though Juwan Taylor at right tackle has had a great year, Cam Robinson at left tackle has just had an okay year. Yeah, you you can't be okay against Dallas. So they're going to continue to get the ball out quick. Now the trickle down effect of, of it is this. If they start throwing the ball out quick, y'all got a cornerback number seven over there, Mr. Diggs, that likes to jump things. Yeah. So if they can, if they can somehow manipulate this, and Doug Peterson is very good at this, get that quick game going and get Diggs to thinking that he's going to jump, and with the jump comes the pump. Mm-hmm. Now you can get something going downfield, and I think it's feast or famine with him. He's either going to pick six you, or he's going to give up a touchdown. He reminds me of Mark- Marcus Peters in that respect. Mm-hmm. So I think the chess game within the chess game of how to handle Dallas's pass rush without getting Trevor Lawrence beat up and hurt, but by the same time not being afraid to at some point take that five-step drop and have to try to throw the ball down the field because you can't you can't beat Dallas by being pedestrian. I think you're going to have yep. to score some points. You also forgot to mention old friend on the defensive line, Dante Fowler, who's having a yes. pretty nice little season for Dallas, which is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. They've got a lot of depth on the defensive line. I'll, I'll tell you a matchup, Tony, that I'm nervous about. It's not one that you would think is a big deal, but Zay Jones is somebody who historically has given the Cowboys a lot of problems. And with Ooh. the Cowboys being without their number two and number three cornerbacks in this game, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis, they're relying on Kelvin Joseph, a second-year corner, and Deron Bland, a day three pick from this year, uh, on the outside. Jones is just one of these guys. He's bigger than you think. He's faster than you think. And he got, he has fantastic body control. And last year, the Cowboys played the Raiders on Thanksgiving Day. And Zay Jones caught like five passes for 60 yards. But he drew like four pass interference calls down the field. I'm just nervous about how the Cowboys are going to stop Jones. And then Christian Kirk. Like Dallas has struggled with these vertical slot receivers all season long. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys have big days against the Cowboys secondary. That's all. Yeah, Kirk Kirk is sneaky. He's uh he he runs really, really good routes. And once he catches the ball, he's like a punt returner. Mm-hmm. But you're right about Zay Jones with his body type. And that shocked me in training camp. Zay Jones is built like Russell Westbrook. He's yeah. like he's like six two, maybe a little bit. He's thin, but he's wiry and he's muscular. Yeah, he's strong. Yep. And and so the thing with him is. He had a really good game against Baltimore, a career game. Then he had an awful game against Detroit where he dropped everything that they threw to him. He started out dropping the ball last week again, and then he got hot again and started catching everything. So 
Yeah, you know, the, the, the funny thing about Zay is maybe he played so good against Dallas because his father played for the Cowboys, yeah. Robert Jones, yep. Yep. back in the day as a Mike linebacker. And uh, I, I don't know, you know, but he's just one of those dudes that if you don't pay attention to him, he, he'll he'll get you. Sort of like uh, the, the Gabe Davis dude yeah. up in Buffalo. He's just, he's a he's just sneaky. High just, variance players, right? Like, you know, can't always count on them week to week, but when they hit, they can completely change your offense, right? Yep, they absolutely can completely change your offense. Now, for me, one of the things that concerns me too a little bit about you just looking from the other side is I talk about Tony Pollard. We can't forget about Zeke because uh, I'm not one of those bash Zeke guys because of his contract. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people that understands that even though we love Tony Pollard and what he, what he does and he's explosive and all of this, there's something to be said about that dude that can get you three and a half, four yards and to wear your defense down. And um, Zeke concerns me from that perspective a little bit, because as far as the ebb and the flow of the game goes, Pollard concerns me with the big plays. Nobody likes to, to give up a big play. Zeke concerns me with the ability to keep that defense on the field. And that is a problem from just a standpoint of ebb and flow of the game, if anything, because you obviously don't want, your defense on the field all day. And then when guys start to get tired and suck in air, you know what? That's where Robert, that's where Tony Pollard hurts him. Yeah. Because now it's like you start to lose your soundness. You start to lose your discipline because you're fatigued. And then they give the ball to Speedy Gonzalez and he breaks one off for 30 yards and scores a touchdown. Yeah. So those two as a tandem, that that's also something that I think we need to be concerned with. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to have a discussion about Ezekiel Elliott's contract. But I think the Cowboys have finally figured out like the best way to utilize these two players, right? Let Pollard get a lot of the work kind of between the 20s, right? And let him be the guy that's creating your explosive plays. But whenever you need a third and one or you're in the goal line or you it's second and three and you want to you know pick up that next set of downs, that's where Zeke has been really, really good this year. I, ju I just saw a stat this morning. He's number one in the league in, in efficiency on the short yardage stuff. And that matters, right? Like that's – if he can continue to do that for the rest of the season, who cares what his contract is going forward, right? Like he's providing the Cowboys a lot of value. I got one more just really quickly before we Go move forward. on because I don't think this player gets enough attention, because, but he's been absolutely amazing this year. Tyson Campbell. Um, mm. I mean – Frankly, Tony, I think he's been a top 10 corner this year. Um, the Cowboys have CeeDee Lamb, who they'll move all around. They're going to put him in a slot. They'll put him on the outside. Campbell's just the one guy that I think could wreak some havoc on the Cowboys' offense because Michael Gallup has not played particularly well over the last couple of weeks. Noah Brown doesn't create a lot of separation. They're bringing in T.Y. Hilton for his first game, and I expect him to play. I would be nervous about Dak testing Tyson Campbell in this game. Let me tell you what Tyson Campbell is, man. Tyson Campbell is steady Eddie. Tyson Campbell is the guy who you don't hear from. And a person that doesn't really understand the game and understand that position will think he's just a guy. But you and I both know when you have a corner or a tackle, whether it's right or left that you don't hear from, that means he's doing his job. Good side, right? Yep. That's a good sign. He's physical. A little bit over 6'1", a little bit over 200 pounds. You think about Marlon Humphrey, you think about mm -hmm. a guy like this. And this, you think about Byron Jones with, you know, without a bunch of picks, but just doing his job, this is who you think about. He's not the Jalen Ramsey. He's not Darrell Reeves. He's not that. But he is just that stoic guy who's going to make every single throw a very difficult one for the quarterback. And uh, I don't expect we're going to hear his name a lot this weekend i, I hope that, not because if we do it probably means that something bad happened for the cowboys offense dak needs to probably find somebody else to pick on because i agree with you i think he garnered some all pro uh votes uh, he should at, at very least a pro bowl uh, consideration yes but he he has been just that good another guy who was chosen last year he was the first pick of the second round where trevor lawrence was the first pick of the first round so the one thing we can talk about is the draft from two years ago when Urban was the coach it mm -hmm. actually it turned out yeah to be Funny pretty enough. good when you add in Andre Sisko and and Travis Etienne it actually just turned out to be pretty yeah. decent 
Yeah, the Cowboys had a lot of interest in Tyson Campbell because he fits exactly what Dan Quinn wants, one of these long athletic boundary corners. They tried to trade up, but they couldn't get, obviously, ahead of Jacksonville at 33. They chose Kelvin Joseph instead. Not who's, looking, similar, who's similar in, in stature. He's kind yeah, of the just same guy. Not in quality of play at all right. to this day. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's – Give some uh, predictions about this game. But before we do that, we want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds trends for every ba- or professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup. They've got it covered at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, and we Know that you do. You're listening to one right now. You can even find those at Bet Online as well. They are always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, a very special announcement from NHTSA. We need you to drive sober. If you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks, a few becomes too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think about calling for a ride, but then you're like, nah, I live nearby. I can make it home. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst thing that could happen to you? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, or even you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers out there, police officers out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive for a few after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe, plan ahead, get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. So my message is for you: drive sober or get pulled over. All right, Tony. I am so interested to hear your thoughts on how you think this game is going to go and who wins. What do you think? I think the Jaguars are going to win, man. And I, huh? I, I, re- I really believe, you know, there are a lot of people. We were at the press conference the other day, and uh, one of the longtime writers said, uh, Gary Smith, uh, he, he he said, man, I wish the Texans wouldn't have given Dallas a wake-up call. And I, I think sometimes I can agree with him. I understand why he said it. I, I don't necessarily think in the NFL that's what this is. I think in the NFL – it just proves that you have to go out. Everybody earns a check. And the difference mm-hmm. between the best team, well, the difference between the top three or four teams and everybody else is something. But the difference between the fifth best team and the 25th best team really isn't that much no. when it comes down to executing and game plans. I, I I I don't think Houston provides the things that the Jaguars provide because I think the Jaguars are an absolute threat in the passing game. And then outside of the Detroit game, all of the eight losses, seven of them were by one score or less. So – I really believe it's going to be fired up, filled to the rafters. And I think the Jaguars are going to pull it out. And I'm even give you a score. I'm going to say they're going to win it 23-20. Okay. I agree with you, though, that this is going to be a close game. Like, it feels like one of those coin flip games that's decided in the last two minutes, right? And it could be, you know, comes down to a 53-yard field goal by Brett Maher and the Cowboys, right? Like, I don't see this being a blowout for Dallas. And I don't. I, I have a hard time believing that Jacksonville would blow out Dallas either. Like they just, it hasn't happened all that often. So I, we're going to have a game. That's, that's going to be the best part is we're going to have a fun game on Sunday afternoon. I, I'll go with you. I'll, I'll let's pick Jacksonville. Dallas might be looking ahead a little bit this week. They've got a huge game against Philly on Christmas Eve next week. I think there would be a little bit of uh, a tendency to look ahead to that game. The other thing, Tony, is Jacksonville's just pretty good. And yeah. whenever you have a cyborg at quarterback like Jacksonville does now, those games could always be really, really difficult. I'm going to go 28-27 Jacksonville. That's a good score. The thing about this team, you look at the record, and I'm more concerned if they play a team like Detroit. I'm more concerned when they play the Jets here coming up than I am when they play a good team. Look at what they've done. Against Kansas City, they were right there in the game. Yeah, and absolutely. They, and they lost because they scored a touchdown. And they got called back because of a, a bad penalty by one of our offensive linemen. Um, Baltimore. They, they beat Baltimore. They blew out the Chargers in L.A. Mm-hmm. They were down 17-0 to the Raiders and won 
and then they they last week they go into Tennessee and they punch the bully in the mouth and they beat them and they really 36 22 doesn't give that game was that game was a blowout. Yeah. So the thing is is when they play a good team, they have a tendency to line that thing up and and, and say, let's go. And uh I don't think that's gonna be any differently this week, but we'll see. I know the game's gonna be a lot of fun. I can tell you I had 12 ticket requests from Cowboy fans. And uh, I told them all no, because I got, yeah, I'm not in position to do that like I used to be, but um, we're going to see, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to have a postcast on that game Sunday. So if your people want to tune in and hear about that, I always do a postcast immediately yes, after please. the game. So make sure you, you check that out. It'll be on the Locked On Jaguars YouTube page or wherever you get your podcast. Hey man, it's been fun. I do have to say folks need to make their second list on Locked On Sports today with Peter Bukowski, because whenever there's a local story in any sport, we got a locked on host that's local and they break it down and give it to you like you can't get it anywhere else. So it's a fun show every single day. It's less than a half an hour, but make sure you check it out wherever you get your podcast and like and subscribe and make it your second listen. There you go. Follow Tony on Twitter at Shop Talking Wig. Uh, I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. I'm sure we'll be uh, talking throughout the game and throughout the week. This is going to be a, a fun week, like, regardless is. of the outcome. This is, a, this is a fun matchup that we just don't get very often. Uh, we get some Doug Peterson against the NFC East again, yep, right? That's, yep. That'll be fun. Uh, and it's just always it's always fun. Uh, not Stephen A. Tight. I don't go over the top with it, but it's always fun when the Cowboys are playing. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I might do something I normally don't do. I normally don't live tweet the game. I might go back and forth with you. Oh yeah, we but, need you to. We especially, need you to. especially if some of the stuff that we're talking about happens. I'll be like, I told Marcus this was going to happen, and I told Marcus this is what I was afraid of. So, yeah, we might do that Sunday, man. But this has been fun. I appreciate it. And uh, you're one of the best in the business, man. And I appreciate everything you you do, brother. All right. All right. Enjoy the game, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.